We're now going to have a look at environment variables and how we can use them inside our containers. Uh, before we do that, what I want to do is install my dependencies locally. If we look at our PHP Docker file, as you can see here, when we run Composer install, we're actually not installing our dev dependencies, but I want my dev dependencies locally. If I want to add like a Symfony var dumper or if I want to add PHP unit, which are normally things which you add as dev dependencies, then I won't actually have access to them with the current setup. But let's remind ourselves how we've set this up in our Docker Compose file. If I do install my dependencies inside my app folder, then that will then be mounted into the var www HTML folder. So that means that I can work with my dev dependencies also. I'm gonna CD into my app folder, and then I'm gonna run composer install, and I'm gonna say ignore platform requirements. The reason why I'm gonna do that, let's go to the composer JSON file, is I have specified PHP 8 or PHP 8 minimum. If we go and look at our Docker file, we are saying at the top that we're using PHP 8.1. So if I'm not actually using that version of PHP on my local machine, I might have problems when I come to install this. But if I say ignore platform requirements, then it'll ignore which version of PHP is on my computer and it'll just go ahead with the install and install the versions which we have asked for in our composer JSON. Hope that was clear. Let's go back and install this. So the option I want is ignore platform requirements. Okay, everything's installed there. Just a quick reminder of what we've installed. We've asked for as a dev requirement, I've asked for PHP unit and for our actual uh, installed normal requirements, we're getting Symfony Cache and Pradis, which we're gonna use shortly. Next thing I'm gonna do is run Composer Dump Autoload. That will generate the autoloading files, which means that autoloading will work for me. And then we shall spin everything up and we'll shell into the container and I'll show you that those dev dependencies are in there. So docker compose f docker compose dev dot yaml up hyphen d that's all good. In fact I need to go up one level because when I ran Composer install, I CD'd into the app folder because that is the folder which contains our, our PHP application files. Let's go up one level and we'll try that again. And in fact, while we are on the subject of folders and context, I'll just have a quick run through everything for you because sometimes you might see in a Docker, compo in a Docker Compose file, you'll see build and then you'll see context. I've not supplied a context, so that means that it will use the folder which this Docker Compose file is in as context. And so when it goes to build this Docker file, let's go and have a look at this. It is actually using that folder where the Docker Compose file is as the context. And so it means that when I'm specifying my paths, I'm specifying them from that location, i.e. the very root of this project. And the reason I did this is because it keeps life simple. Say I wanted to access a file or folder which was sat in a parent folder to this uh, Docker file, you can't actually do stuff like this where you are going up one level. And so I find it's best to just take that top-down approach, do everything from the context of the root, and then you won't have those kind of problems or those kind of problems to solve. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get back to the task in hand. I want to look inside this container and just check that my dev dependencies are inside that vendor folder or prove to you that those dev dependencies are indeed inside that vendor folder. So we shall CD into a vendor and we just need to see if there's PHP unit there because that's the only dev dependency we have at the moment. And as you can see, PHP unit is there. And so if we weren't using that volume mounting, if we were just um, dealing with what had been copied over into the container, then we wouldn't have PHP unit. 
no dev means don't install the dev dependencies so that means that we wouldn't have had php unit when this was copied over into the container anyway let's come out of there and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add some source files so before i do that actually i should have done this already i need to create a branch for this particular recording so things are nice and clear i'll be able to push it up to github and you'll be able to go and grab the branch for this particular lesson and just add these source files that I'm about to add. So I'll actually go and create that branch now, git checkout b and I'll just call this environment variable so this will be the branch that you need to look for. Okay so that's pushed up behind the scenes I'm just going to go and add some source files now and then I'll talk you through them. Okay so inside of app we have this folder called source src and so inside of there I've just put some application files and they're all related to connecting to the database and querying the database. The main file that we are concerned with in this one where we're going to look at the environment variables is one inside of database and it's called connection. And so if we scroll down to the constructor there are basically five environment variables in here and they're all uh, again they're all related to connecting to a database. So we have MySQL host, MySQL database, MySQL port, MySQL user, and MySQL password. And so in order to get these environment variables into here, we can use our Docker compose file. So let's think about this. We want to access those environment variables inside of our application code. What is the service which is responsible for handling the application code? Well, it's actually this app service here. And so this will be where we define those environment variables, even though we've already defined them here. But this is in order to tell MySQL what those values are but now we actually need to tell our application what those values are in order to make that connection. I'm not going to make you watch me write these line by line, we'll drop them in here. Okay so for the time being I've just hard-coded these values in here like so but in a moment I'm going to show you how we can actually pass environment variables into our docker compose file in order to set environment variables. Let's go and rerun this because Docker Compose needs to know about those changes. And so you'll have seen there something quite interesting. It didn't touch these first two because that was the database and that was web, i.e. our server. So it just left those running, but the changes have been made to the app service. And so as you can see, that got restarted. And so I've got my records in my database now. I now have my application connected to that database. Hopefully I should be able to use this for real. So we'll select a language and we'll go and type in hello, if I can spell it correctly, hello, translate. Okay, and so that is actually coming from the database. Let's try and translate one which isn't actually in the database. So again, if I try and translate one which I know is not there, so it says translation not found. The code for all of that, by the way, is just in the top of the index.php file. We're just going into the translation repository and inside of there, there's a query which looks for a translation of a particular phrase. So have a look through that in your own time. Like I said earlier, this course isn't about stuff like this database uh, queries or PHP code. It's about getting a Docker system up and running. So I've tried to keep it as simple, but as fairly realistic as I can get away with it. Now, like I say, I've just hard coded these in here, but I can actually pass environment variables in to set my environment variables inside of the, in fact, it will be at the very root of this project because that's where the Docker compose file is sitting. So here, if I just create a .env file, I can set my environment variables inside of this and in order to access these then inside of my docker compose file I just do this kind of thing. So you can do them with the curly braces or without if you actually injecting them inside of a string then you'll need to do it this way but I could do it by just saying this either will work. I'm just going to use the curly braces so that we have consistency in case I do want to inject it inside of strings later on. 
One thing I should cover here, notice the MySQL host. Where is this DB coming from? Well, the MySQL host is the actual, we use a service name, like I said before, it sort of uses service names like IP addresses. So we said that our database was this, and so that is what we use for the database host. And by the way, when you use a Docker Compose file, all of these things, these services inside of here can automatically find each other. So if I say I'm looking for web in part of my environment here, then it will automatically be found. You don't need to add any extra configuration. Basically every service which you define underneath the services key is capable of finding any other service which you define underneath this services key. They all, by default, get added to the same network. Now, you can specify your own networks inside of here. I've not needed to do that because all of these services, I just want them all to belong to the same network, and so I'm just going to use the default one, and Docker will automatically give it a default name. Okay, let's carry on adding these. Just to keep life simple, you'll notice that I've used exactly the same names here as what I'm going to use here. Okay, again, after any changes which you, made to your, which you make to your Docker Compose file, you need to go and rerun this again. And you'll see that Docker was actually smart enough to know that no values have actually changed there, so this should still be working. Let's go over to our browser and prove that theory. Okay, perfect, and so we still have a working application. One other thing which I will mention is it can have different .env files for different environments. So say for example, I wanted to have one which was like the default for production that I called .env, no problem. But then I might want to go and add one which I'm just using locally or using for development. In which case you can just add an extra option to your command. I'll just make this a little bit smaller uh, where you will say .env file and then you specify the file which, are, which you want to use as your .env file or should I say, the path to your alternative .env file. And another thing that I'll mention is that with a lot of cloud computing solutions, you won't actually need a .env file. You'll just go and enter your environment variables using like a user interface. Anyway, that covers environment variables. Let's move on. And so here are those source files. I'm on Gary Clark Docker hyphen PHP. Uh, inside of the source folder here, you'll find all of them. So the one that we looked at was the connection one and so you can do this one of two ways you can either pull in the repo or pull in the branch or you can actually just click on it and then if you go to raw then all you would need to do is just grab all the code copy it and then just go and paste it into a file so yeah that's where all the stuff is and the branch for this recording is environment variables